In today's story, I'll be showing you someone who is helping to maintain biodiversity and conserve wild environments through ecotourism. Hello, it's James from the Global Portrait Project, where I'm painting 193 portraits of 193 subjects, with each person from a different country. The subjects are all involved in their country in a positive environmental story. And this time it's the turn of country number 41, Côte d'Ivoire. The subject for my portrait for Côte d'Ivoire is Carl Daikite, who has been working throughout West and Central Africa to develop multiple ecotourism businesses where engaging the local community and preserving the wild environment are at the core of the business. Côte d'Ivoire, also known as Ivory Coast, is a country on the southern coast of West Africa. It borders countries beginning with L, M, B and 2 beginning with G. Côte d'Ivoire has exceptional biodiversity, vast mineral deposits and significant revenue from cocoa and other exports. Although Côte d'Ivoire has put environmental health at the centre of its development plan, it still has significant risks from deforestation and climate change. Carl Emmanuel de Aquite is the managing director of Living the Wild, whose core business is consultancy in the management of establishments such as the Nzi River Lodges and the Te Forest Lodges, which are pioneers in green tourism in Côte d'Ivoire. It was in the heart of the Ivorian savannas that Carl took his first steps with nature, which fueled his love for the natural environment and wildlife. From then on, his vocation took shape to be a defender of flora and fauna, and therefore an actor in sustainable development. In South Africa, he trained as a ranger and then specialized in the field of safaris and the management of lodges. His adventures continued in Zambia, and Botswana. His love and curiosity for nature drove him to even more remote, less explored lands such as the primary forests of the Congo Basin, Republic of Congo. For more than eight years, Carl contributed to the success of the Congolese ecotourism with the development of unique tourist products in primary forests with rare biodiversity. Carl has never been far from conservation work as his family, in 2001, founded the Nzi Wildlife Reserve, which covers 40,000 hectares. It took them a lot of defence efforts in order to reduce the damage that had been done in the area, with cutting trees for charcoal, poaching and illegal mining. Over 20 years of protection have allowed Nzi to regenerate itself with wildlife and flora, to a point where now it is a popular place to go in Côte d'Ivoire if you want to do a safari or see some wildlife. A huge part of what Carl has learned is about working with local communities. Many of today's rangers in the parks were formerly poachers. The parallel ecotourism business has helped support and develop an economy in the 14 villages surrounding the Inzi Reserve. Carl has also developed community projects such as training more than 100 locals to apiculture producing honey and bioagriculture. The tourism centres are the ones buying their products at a fair price. Carl is now in the process of fencing the reserve, not only to help reduce poaching, but also to be able to receive animals from human wildlife conflicts in other parts of the country becoming a sanctuary for the remaining wildlife in Côte d'Ivoire. A test of the effectiveness of this work was a successful recent translocation operation of an elephant to the reserve. With his long history of his family's work at NZ and his experience gained working throughout Central and West Africa, Carl has returned to Côte d'Ivoire and set up Living the Wild, an ecotourism consultancy business which aims to be a lever not only for the promotion of a much more responsible tourism, but above all for conservation of the last green and wild spaces in West Africa. If you'd like to find out more about Carl and Living the Wild, I have put some links in the description below. 
In Carl's words, humans slowly encroach onto the remaining wild areas to a point where some animals try to claim back what is theirs. Unfortunately, when these animals come out of their hides, they are no longer safe, as, after we've stolen their lands, we claim that they are no longer welcome and consider them to be a threat to our survival. The only option left here is the development of a network of protected areas. There is more information about this painting and how to get involved with the Global Portrait Project on the website and Instagram page, and the links are in the description below. Next time we'll be meeting a leading environmental activist from Croatia. <laughs>